this is Mrs. Ofton, and today we're going to be talking about an introduction to sequences. So first, a definition. What is a sequence? Well, in real life, a sequence is usually an ordered list. One, two, three, four, five. In mathematics, we can define a sequence as a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. So we think about it, there's a first number in the list, a second number, a third number, a fourth number, and so on. So f of 1 is a sub 1, f of 2 is a sub 2, the second number in the list, f of 3 is a sub 3, the third number in the list, etc. These things a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, they're called the terms of the sequence. Now there are many different types of sequences. The ones we're going to talk about today, there are infinite sequences. These infinite sequences are called infinite because they go on forever. An example, negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15. See, the dot, dot, dot here, it goes on forever. The domain is all the positive integers because there's a first term, then a second, then a third, then a fourth, then a fifth, there's a millionth term, a two billionth term. You get the idea. A finite sequence has n number of terms. n could be really huge, but it still just has a certain number of terms. And the domain is the first n positive integers. So I've written a sequence here that has um, seven terms. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I don't know what the rule would be for that sequence, but it's a sequence. It has an order. Start with two, then subtract one, then add one, then subtract one, then add one. You have to stop after you've done this six times. So that's an infinite sequence and a finite sequence. Now, we can write the terms of the sequence if we are given the rule for the sequence. By the time you've worked with sequences for a little bit, you'll also be able to write the rule for a sequence if you're just given the terms. And if you're given a few terms, you should be able to predict like what's the 27th number in this sequence. But for right now, we're just going to focus on writing the terms of a sequence. So I have a sequence here, a sub n equals negative 1 to the nth power times 2n plus 1. So to find the a sub 1 term, the first term, I'm going to replace n with 1. So I have negative 1 to the first power times 2 times 1 plus 1. And I'll evaluate that. This is negative 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, so overall that's going to be negative 3. Then I'm going to evaluate the second term in the sequence. I'll replace this n here and here with 2. So I have negative 1 squared 2 times 2 plus 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1, and this is 5, so positive 5. Okay, I'll evaluate the third term, replacing n with 3. negative 1 to the third power is going to be negative, and this is going to be 7, so I'll get negative 7. Hopefully you can see a pattern evolving. What do you think a sub 4 would be? How about a sub 5? Think about it for a little bit. Here's our function rule, and think about what pattern you're seeing emerge. Hopefully You've said that a sub 4 is 9, and a sub 5 is negative 11. You'll notice that the signs alternate here, starting with negative and then turning positive. If you see that in a sequence, generally you can suspect that it has negative 1 raised to some power as part of the sequence formula. So it's, again, how you write the terms of the sequence. Now, let's say we don't want to write the terms all in a row and start looking for a pattern this way. Well, here, if I want to find the 50th term in the sequence that begin, that is defined, 50 times n plus 7, well, 
I'm just going to 50 replace n with 50 plus 7. Well, 50 times 50 is 2,500 plus 7 is 2,507. So a sub 50, the 50th term, is 2,507. To find the 100th term, I would do pretty much the same thing. Replace n with 100, multiply, and add. I get a sub 100 is equal to 5,007. Hopefully you're looking at this and saying, hey, that's 50n plus 7, and that 2n plus 1, those look kind of familiar. You know, in fact, these are um, linear equations. If we were to plot these points, we get like a little string of dots that are points along a line. This doesn't always happen. In our last slide here, these would have gone like up and down because we have a negative followed by a positive, followed by another negative, and so on. But they're kind of fun to graph, make little patterns. Some sequences are defined recursively. And this is similar to the idea of recursion in computer science and programming where you go back and you do the same thing and you go back and you do it again and then you do it again and you do it again and if you're unlucky you're stuck in an endless loop. Well, recursive sequences are like that endless loop. So in a recursive sequence, you're going to be given one or more of the first terms. All succeeding terms are found using the previous terms. So I may be given like the first three terms of a sequence and they say to get the next term every time you're going to add the last two numbers on the list. Okay. And actually you can famous sequence this way. So here's an example. I want to find the first six terms of a sequence that begins with the first term is five and the second term is eight. And it has this rule, a sub k plus one equals a sub k minus a sub k minus 1. Now what this is telling me is to get the next term, that's what this a sub k plus 1 means, to get the next term, take these two terms, that's the last term and the second to last term, and subtract them. So the first six terms, well 1 and 2, are 5 and 8. a sub 3 is going to be 8 minus 5, or 3. a sub 4, I have to take this term and subtract 8. So I'm going to get 3 minus 8. That's negative 5. a sub 5, I'm going to do negative 5 minus 3. That's negative 8. I should have written negative 5 minus 3. So negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Then I'm going to do, for the sixth term, negative 8 minus negative 5. And that's going to give me negative 3. And you can continue this pattern for as long as you want. So you can write your own recursive sequence by just picking the first two terms and then deciding what you want to do with them. Do you want to add them? Do you want to multiply them? And you can continue following the pattern to get a new sequence. Finally, I want to discuss something called factorial notation. Factorial notation is only defined for the positive integers. And if an integer n is a positive integer, then n factorial, we read this expression n factorial, sometimes they read it n bang. It's like an exclamation point. I get exciting. So excited n is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times blah, 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 3 times 2 times 1. So you start with n, and then you multiply the smaller number and the next smaller number and the next smaller number all the way down until 1, and then you stop. So we're going to evaluate 
four factorial. So I start with four, and I keep subtracting. Okay, four minus one is three, then two, then one, got to one, stop. And do four times three times two times one. That is 24. So four factorial equals 24. Six factorial. So six factorial is going to be six times five times four times three times two times one. Okay? So 30 times four is 120 times three is three. 60 times 2 is 720, and times 1 is still 720. So 6 factorial is 720. That's a big difference. 7 factorial, I could do 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or I could just say 7 times 6 factorial. Because, hey, I already did 6 factorial right here, so, like, why? make it harder on myself. So I know that I have to do 7 times 720. 7 times 720. Okay, squishing that in there. And that's going to be equal to 5,040. Factorial values get huge really quickly. So that's why it's often a good idea to have a calculator better than the stupid calculator I have drawn here to evaluate factorials. Take a minute right now and look at your calculator and see where that button is for x factorial or n factorial. For some people it's under the probability menu, which may be under the PRB button. It also could be on the math menu if you have a graphing calculator. So investigate where that is located on your calculator and be sure you're able to use it. Because trust me, you don't want to be evaluating 12 factorial by hand. It's too many numbers. So that's just a brief introduction to sequences or ordered lists of numbers. We'll be using these a lot in class and also the friend of sequences series. Thanks and see you next time.